Hey guys, Bobby here, and if you're a wedding filmmaker or you're looking to become one, and you're interested in learning how to capture great audio throughout the entire day, then this video is for you. Now, I do not claim to be an absolute audio expert. There are people whose entire job it is is to record or edit audio, and that is definitely not me. But I have been filming weddings for quite some time now, and we've always tried our best to capture high quality audio. There are definitely other ways to do things and variations of the gear that we use, but this is an easy and relatively inexpensive way to get good clean audio at all of the important parts of a wedding day, and even more importantly, to have backup sources for all of those important parts. In fact, if you were starting from scratch, the entire audio kit that I use would only cost you between $600 and $800 or so. And this may seem like a lot, but if you aren't getting good audio for your films, that's a pretty reasonable price tag to pay for a big upgrade in your final product. Now I wanna lay out everything here in the start, and I'll have links to everything I go over below in the description. And while you aren't required to use those links if you are thinking of purchasing one of these things, I do get a small kickback, and I always appreciate you helping this channel grow. So my every wedding audio kit includes the Rode VideoMic Pro, two Tascam DR10Ls for micing people up, Zoom H1s, we have a few, but we usually only use between zero and two. The Tascam DR40 for audio feeds, and then a few cables like an XLR cable, a quarter inch to quarter inch, and an RCA to quarter inch. Now, I think the best way to go through this is probably to break down the day into sections and talk about what I use at each part and how I use it. So let's start with prep. If you like to use any ambient audio in your films, you're gonna wanna grab an on-camera microphone to replace the built-in mics that you have. The Rode VideoMic Pro is the go-to for a lot of people, and there's good reason why it's a great little mic and we love it. We've also had the chance to use the Rode Video Micro, which is a cheaper alternative and still definitely a step above the built-in mics. This is what will sit on your camera for the majority of the day to capture any ambient audio and will provide you most of the audio that you might use during prep. The only real exception to this is letters. Letter reading can and often is a core part of the story in a wedding film, and if your couple chooses to write letters to each other and they're comfortable reading them aloud, I definitely suggest taking advantage of this. Find a nice quiet area away from the chaos of the wedding morning, turn all the music off, and then pull out this little guy. Now you can use any lav setup, but this is the Tascam DR10L, and this is one of the best investments that we've made in this past year. I'm gonna be putting together a separate video going over the settings that we use for this, but this with a lav mic will give you clean, high quality audio in multiple situations, including letters. Whether it's the bride or the groom, you'll wanna clip this mic about chest high, hide it if you can, and then off you go. Earl, you've always been my OAO, my one and only, even at a point when I didn't quite comprehend my feelings for you. When I'm with you, I feel fulfilled. Everything feels right. Time stops when we're together, and I absolutely love that. That pretty much takes care of prep, so let's glance over the first look, which is no different than letters. You're gonna to wanna to use the Tascam DR10L or a similar lab setup on the groom here to get nice, clear audio during their first look. And since they're gonna be close together, you can usually pull stuff from both the bride and the groom with this one mic setup. Onto the ceremony, which is the first spot that you're gonna have multiple audio sources running at the same time. In sticking with the previous couple paragraphs, I'm gonna go over the lav mic setup first. We have two of the Tascam DR10Ls and we put one on the groom as well as one on whoever's officiating. We do not currently put a mic on our brides in most scenarios and are often able to pull vows from the groom's mic since they're usually close together or the audio that we have from the soundboard. That's right, even if you have everybody mic'd up, you wanna also get a feed from the soundboard, speakers, or wherever that audio is going through. For this, we'd recommend the Tascam DR40. This gives you some great options, including mic and line level inputs, as well as the ability to record a duplicate track at a lower level. In order to use this at a wedding, you'll need to use one of the three chords mentioned in the start of this video, but which one you need will depend on the situation. This feed is great because in addition to being a backup, it will often include things that your lav mics won't pick up as well, such as music or readers. And if a mic is used during the vows, this might get you a cleaner version of the bride's vows. Have you ever seen a better looking group than what's up here, huh? Yeah, that's very appropriate. Yeah, we're gathered here in God's presence to witness the marriage 
of Brian and Laura and to ask God to bless them. If there is music that won't be going through the system, like a string quartet for example, we like to use one of these recorders, the Zoom H1. Now these can take a lav mic input if you want, and in fact that's how we used to use them until we upgraded, but in this scenario we usually just put the recorder straight on the ground in the middle of the quartet and we make sure to test our audio levels. We also use these recorders with a lav mic attached to have a backup source for the podium if one exists. This is usually where readers speak from, so just put the recorder on the podium, run the lav mic up the podium mic until it's nearly at the end, and secure it with some gaff tape. The ceremony is now done and it's on to the reception. The main thing you'll care about here are the speeches being given, and you'll be able to get those directly from the band or DJ in most cases. You'll want to use the Tascam DR40, again with one of the cables that I mentioned hook into the back of the soundboard, or a direct output from a speaker. Also, if you don't care about the music, which we often don't, you can usually take an output right out of the back of the wireless mic receiver with the quarter inch cable. This bypasses the soundboard and anything that the DJ might change to the toast, like adding music or sound effects or drastic level changes. But of course, that is just your main source of audio and you never want just one. And you can handle your backups in one of two ways. Usually we'll have the Tascam DR10L on the person giving a speech, but this year we intend to bring our own mic stand to every wedding. Not only does this allow us to properly light an area and keep the speaker within it, but it also allows us to easily hide a safety backup lav mic, just taped to the bottom of the wireless mic. So there it is guys, how to capture the best audio at weddings. These tools should allow you to be prepared for anything that might be thrown your way on a wedding day. I hope you found this useful, and if you are doing something different with your audio setup, I'd love to hear what has worked for you. Similarly, if you have any questions, comments, or videos you'd like to see in the future, please leave them below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would be incredibly grateful to have you like it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future.